So now with the Intel's 12th gen launch, we have available two separate generations of RAM. We have the DDR5, which I have inside there and didn't you know, get it out because I'm actually using the system at the moment. And then we have DDR4 and Intel's 12th gen supports both of these things. You can have DDR4 motherboards and DDR5 motherboards. Now, if you are a creator, is it worth getting the DDR5 or is DDR4 as good? What is the difference? Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Well, I have run over 100 different benchmarks for creators. I'm quite uh, certain that after this video, you're going to find out if DDR5 is worth it or not. Motion Array is a fantastic tool for creators to make better videos and faster. Motion Array has over 80 80,000 premium quality templates, presets, plugins, music and sound effects, stock video and photos. In a nutshell, it is a one-stop shop for all your video post-production needs. Configure the membership to suit your needs. Pay annually, monthly, cancel anytime you want and enjoy your unlimited downloads. Not sure about Motion Array? Go try out the hundreds of free assets available on the website. Check out Motion Array in the video description below. Before we go on to the benchmarks, there are a few very important things you need to know before this video makes sense to you. DDR5 is like very early days, it, it has some issues. If you want to know more about those issues, then I recommend you check out my video, I'm going to link it up there as well, where I'm going to talk about more about like the 12th gen and issues and things like that. But it's improving every single week and it's already more stable than my early days where I actually made, you know, reviews of the i5 and i9. In terms of the benchmark scores, I ran every single single benchmark for every single application at least three times to create a pattern. If the pattern doesn't appear in the three benchmarks, I'm gonna have to run the fourth and fifth and so on, run until a pattern appears. For example, if you run three benchmarks, one is quite high, one is in the middle and one is low, then it doesn't really give you the average. Does the actual system lean towards more the higher side or the lower side on the middle side? It's very important to know. So every single benchmarks that you see is an average of at least three tests. I tested all the DDR4 on Windows 11 as well as DDR5 on Windows 11. Now I used the DDR5 early benchmark from Windows 10 as the baseline because early days the Windows 10 was actually better or faster on any of the 12th gen systems than Windows 11. But now, just before making this video, I made another load of benchmark runs with the DDR5 on the new like Windows 11 and every single program optimized to the latest software updates because there's been a lot of updates. So now we can see how much the Windows between Windows 10 and Windows 11 we have performance improvements with the DDR5 and how the DDR5 like has already improved since the early benchmarks. In terms of the DDR5 testing platform, we are using the Z690 Pro Art motherboard from ASUS. We are running the 12600K i5 as the CPU of our choice. The DDR5 RAM we're using is Kingston Fury Beast, the DDR5. It's rated at 5200 MHz at CL40, but we are running four sticks of them, 4800 MHz and CL38 because there's some stability issues. I recommend you check out the video I mentioned earlier about the 12th gen issues where I'm going to go more into the issues with DDR5 and things like that. Then you'll understand why we're running this at 4800 megahertz. So potentially there is actually more headroom of DDR5 because I am not running the DDR5 not at all at its highest like capable you know specs. The cooler is the ROG Ryujin 360 and the GPU is ASUS TUF RTX 3090. When we move on to the DDR4 platform, we are using i5 12600K. The motherboard is the Gigabyte Z690 Aero G DDR4. There is DDR5 version of that motherboard as well, but if you want to check out these motherboards or reviews of all these things, go check them out on my channel. For DDR4 RAM, we are using three separate kits. We are using Gigabyte Designare here. This is 64 gigabytes of DDR4. This is running at 3200 MHz a CL16. It's basically very mid-range, very affordable, like the cheapest of the bunch, 64 gigabytes to sticks. The branding for these DDR4s is not important. What's important is the specs, 3200 megahertz CL16. 
Next of all, we're running a Kingston Fury RGB sticks, and these are 64 gigabytes, two sticks running at 3600 megahertz CL18. And then the third DDR4 we're checking is Kingston Fury as well, and this is Renegade, but now we're running four sticks of 16 gigabytes, still 64 gigabytes in total, but the latency is lower, CL16 and 3600 megahertz. So we're testing if the latency has an impact on all of these programs as well as the frequency. So then looking at the benchmarks, first of all Cinebench benchmarks and it's no point really sharing this with you because they're all the same. The Cinebench is not like RAM really focused so whatever RAM you're running for Cinebench it doesn't really matter. But moving on to Geekbench, now this is interesting because Geekbench tests different like everyday tasks and the multi-score and single score, the RAM difference is actually different. So on the screen what you can see is the baseline is like I mentioned before is the early benchmark of DDR5 at 4800 megahertz on Windows 10 Pro. So as you can see the DDR5 new which is you know all the software updates is 103.5 so 3.5 percent faster. The 3600 megahertz CL18 is 2 percent slower. 3600 megahertz CL16 is roughly 4.6 percent slower and 3200 megahertz CL16 is roughly 6.2% slower. In terms of the single core speeds, the difference isn't as much. The new DDR5 benchmarks are 2.7% faster. The 3600 CL16 is 2.7% slower. 3600 MHz CL18 is 2.9% slower. And the 3200 MHz CL16 is 3.3% slower. Moving on to Photoshop, we're seeing some very interesting results. Our DDR5 early results are actually on the lowest of the bunch over here. 3600 MHz CL16 is 0.4% faster. 3200 MHz CL16, the cheapest RAM, is 2.5% faster. The 3600 MHz CL18 is 3.9% faster and the latest DDR5 benchmark on Windows 11 is 7% faster. So DDR5 has done quite a big leap in photo editing performance here. A Lightroom Classic, another photo editing application over here, and we have a little bit of different results. So DDR5 with the latest benchmarks is 5.5% faster than the early versions. The 3600 MHz CL18 is 0.1% faster than the DDR5 early benchmarks. 3200 MHz CL16 is 1.5% slower than the DDR5. And the 3600 MHz CL16 is 2.8% slower. Moving on to video editing and Premiere Pro. We are using the standard overall benchmark score from Budget Pench and the DDR5 newer version is 0.3% faster on Windows 11 than on Windows 10 which is good news actually because earlier versions were quite a bit slower on Windows 11 so Adobe Premiere Pro and Windows 11 you know they've worked together so DDR5 now finally is faster on Windows 11 than on Windows 10. The 3600 MHz CL16 is 4.3% slower, 3600 MHz CL18 is 4.9% slower and the 3200 MHz CL16 is 6.7% slower. Moving on to After Effects, the newer benchmarks of DDR5 are 1.6% faster than the earlier versions of DDR5. 3600 MHz CL18 is 1.6% slower. 3200 MHz CL16 is 2.6% slower. 3600 MHz CL16 is 3.4% slower. On DaVinci Resolve Extender Score, we're seeing something very, very odd. On Windows 10, the score of DDR5 was massively different than on the latest benchmarks on Windows 11. And I think there is some kind of a mistake over there. Uh, how the benchmarks have run because I can show you on the standard overall score it's all the same but just the extended seems to be much higher on Windows 10 with the earlier versions of DDR5 than even on the latest versions of DDR5 on Windows 11. So if you look at those benchmarks then the latest version of DDR5 with the, all the updated you know Windows and software is 9.4% slower than the earlier version 
of DDR5 benchmarks. 3600 MHz CL18 is 9.8% slower, 3600 MHz CL16 is 10% slower, 3200 MHz CL16 is 10.9% slower. But if we look at the standard overall score, where actually the benchmark results are more like slotted into the same category, we don't see that much of a difference between all of these tests. But the DDR5 early version of Windows 10 is still faster than all the other RAM kits over here. We have 3600 MHz CL16, which is 1.1% slower, 3600 MHz CL18 is 1.2% slower, DDR5 version, latest version, is 1.5% slower, and the 3200 MHz CL16 is 1.9% slower. But on DaVinci Resolve, I need to make a very important note over here that the latest version of the benchmark was run at no XMP, so the DDR5 was running at 4000 megahertz instead of 4800 megahertz, which will give a little bit of an impact and you can lose like, I think up to 5% or something like that, because just the system wasn't stable and I wasn't able to complete the benchmarks with 4800 megahertz. When we're looking at the Blender benchmarks and things like that, then it's the same. There's no point of me reading out those benchmarks to you because all the different RAM configurations are within the margin of error, so I can't tell you that one is better than the other one. As long as you have lots of RAM for Blender, you're all right. Another test I wanted to do is with the iGPU, because when you're running the RAM in any of those systems, the RAM also becomes the iGPU kind of RAM or, you know, video memory for the iGPU inside the CPU. So if you're looking at the DDR5 4800 megahertz, then that is now our baseline, not the earlier version because they're exactly the same. 3600 megahertz CL18 is 1.2% slower, 3600 MHz CL16 is 1.4% slower. So they're basically the same, the frequency here is more important than the latency. 3200 MHz is 3% slower. That's the OpenCL score. Geekbench 5 GPU score for the Vulkan scores, the DDR5 is 100%, obviously 3600 MHz CL18 is 2.6% slower. 3600 MHz CL16 is 3.4% slower. And the 3200 MHz CL16 is 4.6% slower. So with all of those benchmarks now out of the way, what is the conclusion? Is DDR5 worth it over DDR4? Looking at the price what you pay for DDR5, you can clearly see that in terms of the money invested on the DDR5, it is not worth it. It's not so different for creators than DDR4. One interesting thing I noticed with all of these benchmarks is that this 3600 MHz CL16 kit, which is faster latency than this CL18 kit, same frequency, but you know, a bit lower latency on this one, was actually faster than this fastest, faster latency. And I think this is to do with the uh, memory controller on the chip because we're running four sticks instead of two sticks on this chips and that's why it's a little bit, you know, slower. If you wanna get the two sticks of exactly the same latency, so 3600 megahertz but CL16, that's gonna cost quite a bit and there isn't that many sticks out there if you want 32 gigabyte sticks per each or 64 gigabytes in total. So I don't think the 3600 megahertz CL16 is worth it. As you can see, the best bang for buck really is the 3600 megahertz CL18. I know people say latency, well, that isn't, you know, that good compared to CL16, but compared to the results, what I've seen over here, it is often a few percent more, you know, than the 3200 megahertz, which is very, very affordable. So it is a little bit faster. So if you want to get like the most out of your system, I think it's worth 3600 megahertz CL18 sticks because there's lots of these ones available, very affordable prices. I'm gonna leave some of them in the description below. At the same time, I think the best pang for buck really of this is 3200 MHz CL16 because it's not that different from 3600 MHz, but you're paying like a lot less than 3600 MHz. Depending on the deals and things like that, sometimes 3600 MHz is a little bit uh, more affordable, but I think that's the best pang for buck. So interestingly, actually I thought that the video editing difference is going to be where the RAM is going to be a lot different and 
compared to the overall benchmarks, actually in Photoshop, for example, is the biggest difference. We see like probably 7% difference between DDR4 and DDR5. In the video applications, we've seen like maybe few percent, five percent. I don't think we should really get the 10% difference from DaVinci Resolve benchmarks because I think that is a little bit off. When you're looking at the standard score, they're all more like in the same ballpark and things like that. But what I do want to mention looking at other creators and other people who have tested DDR4 versus DDR5, then Optimum Tech found out that the video transcoding is much faster with DDR5. So if you're doing a lot of creating proxies or converting one video file to the other, then DDR5 is quite a bit faster and that's maybe worth it if that is a lot in your workflow. But overall, generally video editing, DDR5 is not worth it at the moment. Now bear in mind, my DDR5 is quite an average speed really 4800 megahertz isn't anything special you could really get ddr4 with the same frequency but ddr4 and ddr5 isn't just the like speed of the ram that's different you can see this as like a highway ddr4 is like a two-lane highway whereas ddr5 actually has four lanes of highway so there's more data kind of pushed through there as well not just the frequency so ddr4 has to have like a bit faster you know like cars transporting those uh, data across whereas ddr4 of DDR5, sorry, has more lanes and you can have more at the same time kind of going across. That's just a very simple explanation. At the same time, DDR5 is the future, but that's just the video for the early adopters who want to go for the 12th gen and wondering, should I go with the DDR5 or DDR4 motherboard? At the same time, one thing you might want to consider is the upgradability in the future. If you get a DDR5 motherboard, DDR5 is going to be like launched a lot this year and the next year. Everything is going to move on to DDR5 so you might be stuck with DDR4 if you want to go with DDR4 motherboard but if budget is the option for you at the moment you might need to go with DDR4 just because DDR5 is so expensive and there isn't that much capacity available for DDR5 for example to find a 32 gigabyte stick each for DDR5 it's very very hard at the moment and XMP doesn't work for four sticks anyway things like that but it's gonna get better you know as we go on but at this point in time DDR5 isn't worth it okay guys I hope this helped you to decide whether DDR5 and DDR4 you know which one is the right one for you is it worth it you know is it better or not generally not really better at this point in time but ddr5 is still the future and that's which way we are heading i'd love to hear from you what you think in the comment section below i'm gonna leave the things that i mentioned in the description below if you want to pick any of those up as always if you're new here soups if you'd like to see more likes if you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one Bye bye